Okay, I gotta go, guys. Let's go. Let's watch it. At its height, the Roman Empire oh, was home to about 30% really of the 100%. world's population. Even and if you don't in many good, ways, it everything. was the pinnacle of human advancement. Its citizens enjoyed the benefits of central heating, concrete, double glazing, banking, international trade, and upward social mobility. Rome became the first city in history with one million inhabitants That's and was a center of Christ, technological, man. legal, and economic progress. An empire impossible to topple, stable and rich and powerful. Until it wasn't anymore. First slowly, then suddenly, the most powerful civilization on Earth collapsed. But every By civilization, we mean a day, complex right? society where labor is specialized and you social Americans classes emerge you know that, right? and which is ruled by institutions. Civilizations share a dominant mutual language and culture and domesticate plants and animals to feed and sustain large cities where they often construct impressive small monuments. Shows Civilization lets us become efficient do. on large Leon scales, Leonardo collect Stockton vast amounts of knowledge and put human ingenuity and the natural resources of the world to work. Without civilization, most people would never have been born. Which makes it a bit concerning that collapse is the rule, not the exception. But the thing with empires collapsing is that always something new comes out of it. But if global warming keeps going like this, nothing new is coming out. Maybe something new is coming out of global warming. Like, you have people living closer to poles and stuff, and they live a bit more Virtually stable. all civilizations end, on average, after 340 years. Hmm. Collapse is rarely nice That's a for time individuals. Though, years, man. Their shared cultural identity is shattered as institutions lose the power to organize people. Knowledge is lost, living standards fall, violence increases, and often the population declines. The, the civilization either completely disappears... It's such a cool concept, right? We, uh, Like, as a kid, I always thought the human race always progresses. There's always progress. But no, it's not. I learned that from 1 before the K. There, there can be times where you reach a higher technology, but then something happens, some event, and technology is lost, knowledge is lost. Like, a great example, it sounds weird, I'm interested in this, cooking recipes. If a cooking recipe is not written down or given to someone, or it dies in a fire or something, it's lost forever, you know? Piz Stuff can be lost forever, by man. Strong I just realized that later in Or something new emerges. Sometimes with more like primitive technology than before. Thrush if this is how it's been over the ages, what Maybe about us today? Useful? I think so, yeah. Like the next level of evolution is that we get fucked by global warming and then apply to that. But the problem Just is many of us as Europeans die. forgot how to build indoor plumbing and make cement, will we lose our industrial technology? And with that, our greatest achievements from one dollar pizza to smartphones Maybe or so laser eye surgery. Will all this go away too? Today, our cities stretch for thousands of square kilometers. We travel the skies. Our communication is instant. Industrial agriculture with engineered high-yield plants, efficient machinery and high-potency fertilizer feeds billions of people. Modern medicine gives us the longest lifespan we've ever had, while industrial technology it's gives us an unprecedented level of comfort cancer, and man. abundance, In the next five years, though probably we haven't yet learned to attain them cancer, without destroying our ecosphere. There are arguably still different civilizations around today that compete and coexist with each other, but together, they also form a singular global civilization. But this modern globalized civilization is even more vulnerable in some ways than past empires we because Ukraine we are corona. much more deeply interconnected. A collapse of the industrialized world literally means that the majority of people alive today would perish since without industrial agriculture, we would no longer be able to feed them. And there's an even greater risk what if a collapse was so deeply destructive that we were unable to re-industrialize again? What if it ruined our chances of enjoying a flourishing future as a multi-planetary species? A global civilizational collapse could be an existential catastrophe, something that ruins not just the lives of everyone alive today, but all the future generations that could have come into being. All the knowledge we might have discovered. Yeah, it's crazy, right, to think the Ukraine war alone fucked industries so much. Imagine like a big major event, like a massive drought because of global warming, man. Imagine the impact. The art the impact. we might have created 
the joys we might have experienced the thing would be lost. Buy a farm and grow your own food so and have a river next how likely to your is all of this? Man. It's like the most touching. No. Which all the rich people are doing? If, once again, I tell you, if you Google around Bill Gates, Michael Burry, they're all buying farmland. Let's start with they're some good news. They're all preparing because they know what's going to happen While in the next While civilization years. collapses have happened regularly, Google is none have ever derailed the course of global uh, civilization. Access to water. Rome collapsed, but the Aksumite Empire, or the Teotihuacans, and of course the Byzantine Empire, carried on. What about sudden population crashes? So far, we've not seen a catastrophe that has killed much more than 10% of the global population. Yeah, need that just no a joke, pandemic, just a joke. no natural disaster, no war. The last clear example... I like that bit in the new uh, comedy stand-up of Mike, uh, Bill Burr, where he says in the beginning, Well, I was hoping Corona will kill more of you fucks. The <laughs> pull of a rapid global like population that. decrease was the Black Death, a pandemic of the bubonic plague in the 14th century that spread across the Middle East and Europe and killed a third of all Europeans and about one-tenth of the global population. If any event was going to cause the collapse of civilization, that should have been it. I, I, I have to stop. But even I, the Black I, Death I stuff, demonstrates I, I humanity's resilience more than its fragility. I have such to say. While the old societies were to... massively disrupted in the short term, the intense loss of human lives and suffering did little to negatively impact European economic and technological development in the long run. Population size recovered within two centuries, and just two centuries later, the Industrial Revolution began. And then we went bang. History is full of incredible recoveries from horrible tragedies. Take the atomic bombing of Hiroshima during World War II. 140,000... Isn't that insane? 140,000 people, man. Right? That is... Unimaginable. People were killed, sure and 90% of the city was at least partially incinerated or reduced to rubble. Like, you Americans but have a dark history too, bro. You know, it's not just all of us. Against you know? all odds, they made a remarkable. 140k with one bomb, man. Recovery. Where's the ethics and Hiroshima's Holy population shit. recovered within Japan's a decade, of it still. and today. There's still a fucking ethical uh, responsibility in pulling the trigger on 140,000 civilians dying. It's bro. a thriving city just, of 1.2 million that's just people. Nothing, dude. None of this made these horrible events any less but horrible for those right, who lived right, through them. History, but for us as a species, these signs of resilience are good news. Why recovery is likely even in the worst case. One thing that's different from historic collapses is that humanity now has unprecedented destruction. Japan was invaded, moons of died though. Dude, I'm not discussing that. I'm just saying there is some ethical power in dropping a nuke on 140,000 people, right? No matter what the cost of it is, power. what it did. Today's so nuclear arsenals about, are so you know? powerful that all-out global war could cause a nuclear winter and billions of deaths. Our knowledge of our own biology and how to manipulate it is getting so advanced that it's becoming possible to engineer viruses as contagious as the coronavirus and well, as China deadly as Ebola. That, am I right, guys? Increasingly, the, the risk of global mm -hmm. pandemics mm -hmm. is much higher than What's in the, the next past. Gonna do? So Thank we may cause dead. a collapse ourselves, and it might be much worse than the things nature has thrown at us so far. But if, say, 99% of the population died, would global civilization collapse forever? Could we recover from such a tragedy? We have some reasons to be optimistic. Let's start with food. There are 1 billion agricultural workers today, so even if the global population fell to just 80... And the one-seventh of the human race is working agriculture? Million, what? It's virtually Makes guaranteed sense, that many survivors would know how to produce food. And we don't need to start at square one, because we could still use modern high yield. The problem I see often is that with global warming, everything close to the equator is going to be inhabitable and just going to be dry and you can't, uh, you cannot uh, do farming there anymore. So at some point, there's going to be this point where not enough food, too many humans, and that's when shit is going to go down. Dude, once there's no more food in the supermarkets, man, that's when people will go back to animals. So Maize is ten times when it's bigger about than its wild ancestor. Bro. Ancient tomatoes were the size of today's peas. And After agriculture, next the years. next step towards recovery Easy, would be rebuilding industrial capacity November, like power grids and automated manufacturing. I was listening to a, a podcast. It's like a lecture on YouTube. It's a guy talking about how to improve, blah, blah, And he was starting like, today on Earth, there's 4 billion people. Like, oh, what the fuck? The problem is that, that is our own? economies of scale Why make it pessimist? impossible because to it just is... pick up where we left off. It, what, what, Many of our high-tech industries me. are only functional because me. of huge demand and intensely interconnected supply chains across different continents. Even if our infrastructure were left unharmed, 
we would make huge steps backwards technologically. But then again, we are thinking in larger time frames. Industrialization originally happened 12,000 years after the agricultural revolution. So if we need to start over after a massive collapse, it shouldn't be that hard to reindustrialize, at least on evolutionary timescales. There's a hitch, though. The Industrial Revolution was fueled literally by burning easily accessible coal, and we are still very much reliant on it. If we use it all up today, aside from making rapid climate change much worse, we could hinder our ability to recover from a huge crisis. So we should stop we using easy-to-access coal so it can serve as a civilization insurance in case something bad happens. Another thing that makes recovery likely is that we'd probably have most of the information we need to rebuild civilization. We would certainly lose a lot of crucial institutional knowledge. Dude, if the world would end today, I wouldn't know shit. I don't know anything. Medical, farming, survival, hunting, I wouldn't know shit. And let's be honest, a lot of you guys too. You should go to the library and get a survival book from Lich, especially on shit. hard drives that nobody could read or operate in. A library, books, but a lot of the what? technological, scientific, I and cultural know knowledge anything. stored in the world's 2.6 million libraries would survive the catastrophe. The post-collapse survivors would know what used to be possible, yeah, technology and dies, they could reverse engineer so some of the tools man. and machines they'd find. You see that zomboid, right? The books in are conclusion, everything. despite the bleak prospect Lots of catastrophic of threats, family. natural or created by ourselves, there is reason for optimism. Humankind is remarkably resilient, and even in the case of a global civilizational collapse, yeah, don't it seems likely that we would be able to recover, even if many people were to perish or suffer immense hardship, even if we lost cultural and technological achievements in the process. But given the stakes, the risks are still unnervingly high. Nuclear war and dangerous pandemics threaten the amazing global civilization we have built. Humanity is like a teenager, well said, well said. speeding around blind corners, drunk without a seatbelt. The good news is that it's still early enough to prepare for and to mitigate these risks. Let's hope so. We just need to actually do it. Yeah, we need to do something. But... We made this video together with Will McCaskill, no a professor anything, of philosophy. Though. We all kind of want scientists to save us. What are you still doing here, mate? Jeez. Well, if you want to see more, check out these videos. And don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you later.